What's going on guys? Big PP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be talking about my personal 55 inch Bivik 4 player arcade cabinet with the 40 terabyte ultimate console inside of it, dubbing it the ultimate arcade. Alright guys, I think it's about time that I officially show this off. I've been getting a bunch of emails, a bunch of DMs, people going nuts for like the details and the specs and what's in this thing and how do I get it and all that. So I'm super excited. I, I did take maybe about a week or two to kind of film this. Uh, I've been really honestly just enjoying my arcade cabinet. Uh, not to mention, you know, TMNT just came out. I was doing a couple of updates as far as the PC games and honestly it was taking about one or two days just to configure the aim track, the light gun side of it. There's so much to discuss, because you could already tell I said aim track, there's already people are like, Vic, aim track, you bought aim. Trust me, we're gonna go through everything on this. I'm gonna answer all the questions I've been getting. It's, it's been insanity. Um, I don't know if I wanna start with the system, I don't know if I wanna start with the artwork. There's just so much to go over, but let's just talk about the basics of the cabinet itself. Again, this is a by Vic Rev A. This is the one-to-one -one scale of the Bi King cabinet. If you didn't see my video talking about where the Bi Vic name came from, definitely check that out because in it you'll understand this specific cabinet, which will not be duplicated. You will see in that video why I won't duplicate this exact setup. Again, this is not the official Bi Vic Rev B cabinet. This really is the first ever one I cut following the same exact dimensions of the Bi King Street Fighter V arcade cabinet that is here, right in front of me. Whereas the other videos that you saw of like the comic book theme cabinet, that is the official Bi Vic Rev B. You can basically tell by the kick plate and the footrest, those are not on the Bi Vic cabinets. They will never be back on. It's something that I just, I, I don't wanna do. But again, you are looking at the first ever Bi Vic Rev A slash by King one to one replica cabinet. So this right now is running a 55 inch 4K TCL display along with obviously four player arcade sticks, dedicated four way and three inch trackball on this, obviously also with the four LED cup holders. This right here is beautiful. I'm basically just missing the spinner, which me personally, I'm not a fan of spinners. I don't use them. I don't really play too many of the games that have the spinner. But in all brutal honesty, you have, you have basically everything you would need for an arcade cabinet. Granted, like I don't have the Tron flight stick. I'm not, again, that's me personally, I don't like it. This right here to me is the basics that you need for an arcade cabinet. Again, you got your arcade controls, you got your dedicated four-way for Pac-Man, Galaga and stuff, and the three-inch trackball for Golden Tees, Centipede. You gotta you got have a trackball, especially for a PC hyperspin build. It's just, it's a must. Now, as far as add-ons on this, I do have two aim track light guns. I have two Guitar Hero Wii guitars, and I do have the DJ Hero DJ controller. And soon, 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 I'm working on DDR, Dance Dance Revolution pads and stuff. So there's a lot of add-ons to it to really make it the ultimate arcade. Real quick, let's take a look at the biggest question that everybody's going crazy for is, hey Vic, what are the encoders and what are the buttons you're using on it? So let's go down with the basics. As far as players one and two, I did eight button layout. Players three and four, I did six button layout. Vic, do I need six buttons for players three and four? I honestly did it because I, I really wanted to, to, to have it and test it. And yes, uh, I mean, I'll be brutally honest, You'll have a handful of games that will actually utilize six buttons, such as the brand new TMNT does utilize six buttons. Um, again, you'll have a handful of PC games that will utilize six buttons. As far as like your regular main stuff, four buttons max is plenty. But again, I went all out. I did the six button layout. Up top, I obviously do have the coin and the stars for each player. In the center here again with hyperspin, I didn't really need all these buttons right here, but basically I have an exit, I have an enter, and I have my mouse click left and right. So technically there's three buttons here that aren't being used. I could set them up to be hotkey, like load and save states, but in all honesty, these three buttons are not being used. I was thinking that I could use middle mouse click, 
but the Ultimark trackball doesn't have middle mouse click. So essentially, I really only needed four buttons up top instead of having this seven, but it all works out and such. I will be adding like the inserts in the coin and the start. I've just been kind of lazy to be honest and busy. So I'll do that later on. Down in the middle, you do have dedicated four way with the three action buttons. And I just mentioned it, the three inch U track from Ultimark trackball. Beautiful trackball because it is flush mount with three quarter inch wood. So you don't have to actually make an indent like other trackballs. This is flush mount and it has a nice little decorative plate. Very nice stuff. So again, I do have a three inch trackball from Ultimark, the U track on this. Buttons, joysticks, the Eclipse buttons all came from Groovy Game Gear. I did red and whites to go with the whole Scarface theming. And I did my basic LED chrome trim for all the others like the start and the coin and such. Only big thing when you do Groovy Game Gear, compared to my Switch cabinet, I did all clear lenses and then the color LEDs. I kind of regret the clear lens with red LED. I should have done red lens with red LED like my Switch cabinet. The red really stands out more than the clear. But in all honesty, when the cabinet is off, it does look very nice uniform with all clear like cases and and uh and rim so it looks great and obviously I do have the white leds on the cup holders amazing i i can't get enough of it all right now the big question that everybody's going nuts for is vic what is the encoders you're using in this thing basically i am using a zinmo with this whole wiring setup you do have the zinmo here right dead in the middle and I'm using two SJ at JX basic encoders. Again, the Zinmo is for players one and two. One encoder is for player three. Another encoder is for player four. As far as the Ultimark trackball, which is kind of sad on this, um, it, you have to buy an add-on for the LED here. I kind of ghetto rig something where I put a bunch of LED strip inside of it. It still does free flow, but to save money, I didn't buy the LED here. That LED for this is like 50 bucks. And I'm like, what the hell? That's expensive. For customers, I'll do that. I'll have to add it on. But my personal build, I basically just put a bunch of LED strip down and it's good. You could see the glow on it. I'm gonna tell you now the big secret. I don't know if you guys saw it. Somebody did see it. A very small handful of you saw my little rant I posted about an iPad. Yes. For this cabinet, I said to myself, I was like, you know what? You guys keep telling me about iPads. I went out and I bought an iPad 4. And let me tell you, it was the worst experience. It is the worst encoder you could ever use. I'm sorry, whoever loves that thing, it is the biggest piece of crap. I, I, I don't even ask you about iPads. It was the worst experience of my life. I will never use an iPad ever again. Basically, if you did not see my little rant, I was so pissed. I waited like a week and a half for this iPad 4 to come in. I got it, I got all excited, I started wiring up. The first thing I wanted to do was to test uh, Streets of Rage uh, with four players. Should be easy, right? Nope, it was a nightmare because you could swap between like X output and D input and basically X output, you can only do two controllers and not four. Why? It is just stupid. It is the worst. It, it, I was on it for 30 minutes. I literally ripped it out and I chucked it. Then I made that video. I'm like, whoever wants this piece of a crap eye pack, I'll sell it for you at a discount. And sure enough, it sold. Somebody did comment on that video. I was like, damn, babe, you know how to sell stuff. You, you know, you're sure you're a really good salesman. So whoever said that, go yourself. But it, would, it just annoyed the hell out of me. So you people with eye packs, uh, I got to give you big kudos for your patience because that is the worst encoder now take a look now tmnt just released i have a bunch of comments go to my video about tmnt you're going to see in the comment section hey are you using an ipad hey i have an ipad how do you have this set up unfortunately you cannot set up tmnt with an ipad 4 you cannot it will not allow for keyboard inputs for it 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 was the worst that was another thing me trying to do custom x output awful it is the it's a nightmare i don't know how you guys or whoever's using ipads but this right here, even if you did four SJ at JX, the cheapest encoders, I'm talking like 20 bucks for two. I have it working beautifully as far as hyperspin PC build. The iPad is pure trash. No, just a hard no.
The real last thing was just kind of the, the kind of downside to the track wall. Nothing major. Again, I do have the track wall right now with my LED strip, so it is going to the color. But adding like 40 bucks for an LED, like Cree LED that goes with the mounting plate, I think that's ridiculous. It should have been added to it. Also, I had to do a little bit of extra wiring. I actually had to cut the plastic casing that it comes with to get the mouse inputs working. It comes with this kind of like black connector with three prongs that are already like, it goes inside. But out of the three prongs, only two had wires in them. And the one that needed the left click, it didn't have a wire in it. As if you had to put your own wire. The worst, I don't know who thought of that. That, it wasn't an easy plug and play setup. So if you are looking at the U-Track, it is a great trackball as far as like plug and play for USB for the mouse wheel. But if you want to set it up for the mouse inputs, left and right, be prepared. You will have to do some extra wiring on that. All right, guys, so real quick, let's talk about the add-on. So I do have a dual USB kind of connector right here in the front for the add-ons. I do have my kind of Home Depot screw set up with the aim tracks. I have two aim tracks right here, basically for storage. If I want to play it, I have the wire tucked in. I could just basically pull down the wire and unravel and go. I also do have, like I said, the Guitar Hero guitars and the DJ control. Let me grab that. So as you can see, I do have two Wii guitars. These are the real official Wii Guitar Hero guitars, not those Amazon stuff. These are the real licensed official Wii guitars. I got two of those and I do have the Wii DJ Hero controller. So if you look at the promo video for this, you'll see all the gameplay real quick on this. DJ Hero does work. Guitar Hero does work as well. Basically, to get all this stuff connected, you do need the raft nets. I got two raft net cables. They come with about six feet. Plenty of room to stand back and gain. So yes, you do have wires involved in this arcade cabinet. AimTrack has an actual Bluetooth add-on that'll remove the wire. It's an extra thing. I personally haven't tried it. But granted though, with the aim tracks, I do stand about a good six feet. And uh, honestly, I have no issues at all when it comes to the aim tracks. All right, so the biggest thing, I mean, people notice it, they see it in all like the Instagram stories and stuff. They go, Vic, man, you did aim tracks on this? I honestly, yes, I did. I did. In our, in our Facebook group, I'm known as the guy with the aim track, so I do, I do like my aim tracks. I do wish I did do Jolt with Gun for IR, but I'm gonna be brutally, brutally honest with you, okay? Jolts are expensive. Gun for IR with the Jolts. Stay tuned, because I do have a shooter cabinet in the works with Jolts. They're expensive. I'm not talking like 100, 200 bucks. The aim tracks are 100 bucks. You're talking close to $700 per light gun, per jolt. Get two of them, you're looking at almost $1,500. You're looking at $1,400, okay? Me, personally, I probably play this machine maybe an hour a night. I didn't go with the jolts because it's, I have no time. If I was a serious gamer, I was serious into the whole light gun scene, I would play for hours and hours and hours, I would invest. But me personally, I barely have time to even do my live streams. I have my cabinets, I game when I can, but I just couldn't, I couldn't bear the expense of the jolts, knowing that I'm probably gonna play my light gun games an hour out of the week, in all brutal honesty. So. There's your little secret on why I did not do jolts. It's honestly, it's a money thing. If I had money to just let it rain, I would do it. But again, I did it for more of, hey, at least I have aim tracks. When family comes over, we play the aim tracks and we use the light guns and I have light gun games to play. On that note, I do have the sensor bar right up top for the aim tracks. The cord on these are long. That's the big thing that many people don't really understand. You do need to put the USB cable in, even with gun fryer, you do need to put the cable in and stand back quite a few feet. So there is wire that follows, you know, the gun. So just keep that in mind. Yes, AimTrack does make a Bluetooth solution that is basically no wires. I should have done that, but I didn't want to just, I, I just wanted to get this up on its feet and working without any headache. So that is why, again, I went with the AimTracks. And honestly, it works beautifully. I got two of them. I have it on my little Home Depot screw rig. It just basically kind of clips in and 
I'm set. I could game on. All right, so we got basically the controls down pad. We got kind of the basics of the specs on it. I'm gonna be talking about the actual PC itself that's in this, but I think it's time to talk about the artwork that I chose on this cabinet. So many people are like, Vic, you did Grand Theft Auto Vice City, an iconic game, and then you did two iconic movies? No, I didn't do that. I did three iconic video games that I played the hell out of growing up. Those are huge childhood memories. Yes, there are two Godfather video games, and yes, there is a Scarface video game as well. So I do always chuckle and laugh when people are like, Vic, you did two iconic movies. I love the movies. I love it. I love it. And you did Grand Theft Auto. What a collaboration. What a great way to do movies and gaming. No, I didn't do it based on movies. I did it based on the games itself. We'll start first with what I believe is the best GTA in the series. Yes, we're going to start with Vice City. Grand Theft Auto Vice City with iconic Tommy Versetti. Rest in peace to Ray, who did the voice for Tommy Versetti. Tom, Vice City was just an iconic game. I personally didn't have a PlayStation 2 growing up, so I had to actually get a PC, which I already had. I actually took like my parents' PC. Wound up having to upgrade like the graphics card to it just to get Vice City to play. And no joke, I probably played Vice City the story mode. I probably beat it like 30 times, like back to back. It's one of those games that when it came out, you just got hooked. You would play it, you would try to steal all the special cars. Again, Vice City to me is number one, the best GTA. And it's just, it, the replay on it is just unbelievable. Iconic characters, again, who doesn't love Tommy Versetti? That's why I chose GTA Vice City for that side right there. Not to mention it's also a great like color, that blue, iconic Vice City blue. You even have like the bikini girl, which, Luckily, my wife was okay with. <laughs> and you got the Rockstar logo. Kept it easy, kept it simple. Again, I had to put Grand Theft Auto on it. So you do have Grand Theft Auto Vice City on that side. And then on the right side, as you can see, I did the Godfather artwork. There was two video games on it. Same kind of scenario in my situation. I didn't have a PlayStation 2 growing up, so I had to buy the PC versions of them. Again, there's two of them, Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. On the bottom, right on the, on, the, on the bottom where it says there, it's only business, that's actually the promo kind of poster for Godfather 2. And obviously on the side it does say, I'm gonna make him an offer you can't refuse. I like the quote, love it. Even on the Vice City side, I did put the Vic VP Game Case Arcades in the GTA font. It's just little details, little details that set it apart. You always have to do that. I even just put up some Godfather gameplay, just so you can kind of see it. If you haven't played the Godfather game, one and two, you gotta play it. Those are must play games. That was like racketeering, you just made yourself and you go into like this like bakery and you beat up the owner and it's like, hey, let me run your business and you throw them out windows. It's, it's mayhem, it's, <laughs> it's an awesome game though. It's an iconic game. Again, it's one of those free roaming games. That's another thing, Scarface, uh, Grand Theft Auto and The Godfather were free roaming games. Open world, like, oh, and this is like its prime. This is when it first came out, like, I mean, aside from Grand Theft Auto 3. Open world games, those are, those are the three top games you should play. And now the final piece of the puzzle, you got the marquee speaker panel area, you got the kick plate, and you got the control panel dedicated to an iconic movie, yes, yeah, Scarface. And again, the iconic video game, which is Scarface, The World Is Yours, same scenario. Came out on the PS2, I didn't have it, I had to get it on the PC. When this game came out, I had to actually upgrade the graphics card and all that, and the RAM, a whole big ordeal. On the screen, I do actually have the Scarface game playing. So many people are so shocked that people were like, there's a Scarface game? Oh, if you didn't play this game, you missed out. It is an amazing game. Uh, we'll start with the kick plate because you see it right there. You got the iconic black and white. I had to do the whole split, black and white. You do have right here Scarface, the world is yours. That is the actual game logo. And right up top, you have the Tony Montana TM lo logo right there underneath Tony himself. The kick plate is just beautiful. Again, people do notice the actual footrest. You have the diamond plate vinyl, I should say. 
diamond plate, foot rest on it, just an amazing kick plate all together. Bring you in now on the marquee, I had to put it. In big letters, say hello to my little friend. Right there, that right there is my marquee. It's a play on because you know the cabinet is not little and oh, amazing. The coolest thing, and I tested it, was actually getting the wording right here. It goes right underneath the TV. The world is yours, an iconic slogan, an iconic thing, looking up at the blimp. You gotta remember the world is yours. And right on the bottom with the, with the speaker panel, you have basically your basic Scarface logo there. What's also pretty cool, when I was designing the artwork for it, the regular black and white, it was too plain. It, I, it was kind of driving me nuts, so I actually added this kind of chain link. It's a chain link fence uh, PNG, and it, I think it looks awesome. So you could see now that I, I mentioned it, there's a chain link white and a chain link black here. It's a perfect blend, I think it looks awesome. And I brought it right down to the control panel. Control panel kept it again. The world is yours right where your palms rest. Money, power, respect. Granted, yes, some people have already messaged me. Victor, it's not like respect, where's the woman? I already have my woman, so I didn't really need to put my woman. So money, power, it's the whole line from Scarface, you'll know it. Uh, iconic line, but I wanted to keep it respectful and put the word respect on it instead of woman. <laughs> Cause you know, first you get the money, then you get the power, and then you get the woman. But on this one, first you get the money, then you get the power. You gotta always have the respect. <laughs> well, there you guys have it. That is the artwork behind the Bivik 55 inch four player cabinet. Again, that is my cabinet. Whenever it is your cabinet, whoever's cabinet, you could do whatever artwork you want, and I chose Grand Theft Auto, Godfather, and the Scarface video games for this specific cabinet. As you can see, this is what the basement looks like, but I have everything I could ever want. My V-pin with the Simpsons pinball party. I got the Mario sticker bomb switch cabinet, and I got the Neo Geo cabinet. Again, when it's your cabinet, you can do any artwork you want. What's so great and awesome with this, just like how other people always mention it, I'm able to play Grand Theft Auto Vice City, I'm able to play The Godfather 1 and 2, and I'm able to play the Scarface game on that cabinet because it is running a PC build. All right guys, now let's really get in depth. Let's talk about the system that is inside and powering this Bivik cabinet. Now real quick, the camera died, I actually overheated, so four hours later and showered, I am back, and it came at a perfect time because I'm gonna be talking a lot. I have a lot to discuss, a lot to say, especially when it comes to PC Hyperspin LaunchBox Arcade Cabinet. So stay tuned, I'm definitely gonna hit you with facts. I'm gonna definitely hit you with reality. Some people might take this part and be like, oh, you know what, Vic? You kind of lost like a sale or kind of a 40 terabyte sale, I should say. Just stay tuned, because I'm gonna explain a lot. I really wanna, I really wanna hit this out of the park on this. So let's first talk about what's actually inside this cabinet. If you've seen my videos in the past, this is running my personal 40 terabyte ultimate console. About a year or two ago, you're gonna see the video of it. It's a white PC case, dubbing it the ultimate console. It has everything you could think of. The main no BS, no filler systems. I'm talking arcade, retro consoles, the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis, the 32X, the Wii, the Wii U, the GameCube, the PS1, 2, 3, PSP, the 360. It's, it's got all the bangers in one setup, in one PC, dubbing it the ultimate console. The ultimate console is inside this arcade cabinet, dubbing this the ultimate arcade cabinet. So obviously there is competition out there in the world. There are competitors, there are other companies, there are other people that are doing what I'm doing. But I always laugh because they do fail to explain how systems, emulators, and all that really work as far as inside an arcade cabinet. I've seen one, eight, 16, 32. I've seen somebody have like a 58 terabyte launch box build and they post it inside of like a 32 inch or a 43 inch arcade cabinet just doing basic advertisements. And I just always laugh because 
they're basically selling you the idea that systems such as PS2 and PlayStation 1 will work with the arcade sticks and in all brutal honesty, they do not. Technically, yes, you could map these things out to those consoles. Is it an enjoyable experience? No. You'd be surprised. I get emails sometimes, people ask me, hey, I have like Grand Theft Auto Vice City as my artwork. Hey, can you play Grand Theft Auto Vice City with the arcade sticks? No, it is the, it's a god awful experience. It is the worst experience you could have. After like two minutes of playing, I guarantee you, you're gonna quit and be like, this is stupid as hell. So now let me explain to you exactly how my cabinet, my system works for this certain situation here. Yes, I am running a 40 terabyte PC in this. I have all the systems, no BS, no filler systems. So I do have arcade retro consoles like the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis, the Game Boys, the 3DS, the Wii, the Wii U, the PS1, 2, 3, PSP, Xbox 360, Xbox Live Arcade. I even have the PC games, the current gen PC stuff all here. However, I do not have all those systems mapped to the arcade sticks. Out of 92 systems slash wheels, I only have 20 wheels slash systems organized and set for the arcade sticks. And those 20 systems are systems that are specifically designed for arcades. I don't have retro consoles such as the NES, the Super NES. I don't have those mapped to my arcade sticks. I have basically main and out of those 20, main is like broken up into like six or seven different categories such as main, main four player, trackball, driving games, schmucks. I have three uh, Capcom categories and I have like the Neo Geo on that. So out of 20, I already named seven or eight, just main specific. Then you got like Sega Model 2, 3, I'll show you the entire list. All those systems that I right now am naming were designed for arcade sticks. That is how I have my setup set. Even Sega Ring Edge, which is Techno Parrot, Tato Type X, I have set to the arcade sticks. I also do have the aim track, the light gun stuff set up. And I do have PC arcade games. Again, whatever is mapped to the arcade sticks will work. If I right now launch, for example, like Game Boy Color, it won't work on the arcade sticks because I have them mapped out to the Xbox controllers. That's just how it is. That is the beauty of it. In all honesty, remember my system, the system I have here is technically a universal multi-platform system. This computer here I do stream with, or at least I say I try to stream with. I right now could turn off the system, pull the PC out and bring it to my battle station and live stream from it and just use my Xbox controllers and it works flawlessly because I have all the other systems that were not designed for arcade sticks set to Xbox controllers. Granted also though, if I unplug all this, go to my battle station and if I launch main with, our, with the Xbox controller, it will work. It is also mapped out to the Xbox controller. I just don't have consoles like Super Nintendo, the Game Boys, I don't have those mapped to the arcade sticks because me personally, they're not fun to play with arcade sticks. Yes, like the Raspberry Pi build, I have those, you could play with the arcade sticks, but in all brutal honesty, playing games like uh, Super Mario 3, you play on the arcade sticks for like five minutes, like, okay, cool, this is awesome, I could do this, but in all reality, you need like a controller, you need a D-pad. So that's what I always laugh, look at that beautiful design, I could put a stool here and hang out and such, because I'll show off. I'll show off the wheels and all that as far as the arcade stuff. So again, I always laugh at that because in all brutal honesty, you could have all these systems, but let's be real. For example, me, if I wanted to play Scarface, the video game, I'm not gonna stand here. Even if it was mapped out to the Xbox World, I'm not gonna stand here and play Scarface. I'm not gonna stand here and play Grand Theft Auto. For me, those games are not five minute games. Those games will take a week or two to beat. I would rather sit on a couch and game with them. I always laugh at that. That's why, you know, again, when it comes to competitors and all that, 
uh, you know, they, they even hard bolt the PCs down to the cabinet and you can't even take it out. Mine is inside of an actual case, so you could technically pull it out. It is again an ultimate console inside of an arcade cabinet. So now you might be saying to yourself, hey Vic, what are you talking about? You said earlier you might lose a sale and all that. Yes, in all brutal honesty, even right now, I sell just the 40 terabyte ultimate console alone. People's eyes go huge when I tell them the price of it. Imagine now adding it to an actual arcade cabinet. So what am I getting at? I don't really know the total terabyte count, but you don't need 40 terabytes for an arcade setup. I always laugh and people always ask me about you know the pricing. You could always DM me. I don't ever say verbally the pricing because pricing changes. There are competitors out there. Somebody hit me one time with an email and a DM on Instagram. And I'm not gonna name the company, but it starts with an M and it ends with Cade. It's four letters in the beginning of it before Cade. Um, you know, somebody asked me, goes, hey, how do you compare it to them? I don't do that, you, you can't ask me that. I will never compare myself to people. I tell people, watch the videos and you'll understand. And, and I hope you understand and figure out, you know, how to make your choice. I'm not here to badmouth other companies. I'm just here to spit straight facts. So I also laugh because people are buying from these companies and they're spending thousands. I'm talking, I had somebody message me. Uh, I don't think I ever said it in a stream, but or on a video, but somebody messaged me, uh, they ordered a company overseas, um, I think I said this, and this person spent like 15 grand on a machine and it arrived to his house dead. Meaning the TV broke off and it broke the graphics, his PC is dead. You spent 15 grand, so when people like literally bulge your eyes like whoa, I just tell them, listen, go look at the competitors and then try to compare the pricing because I always, I, I can't figure out some people's mentality. This right here is the ultimate setup. This is the ultimate arcade. I had somebody that was actually looking to get a dedicated shooter cabinet. He saw this and he's like, wait, Vic, you have like the gun game wheel on this? I said, yeah, whatever is on the dedicated shooter cabinet is technically on this and more. I do have the dedicated shooter wheel on this. So he actually is changing his order from dedicated shooter to the Buy Vic. I don't know if he's gonna get the ultimate console set up, but I believe he is looking at the Buy Vic cabinet now. So now real quick, let's go down the list and I'll show you exactly what systems I have mapped out to the arcade stick. So I have regular main. This main wheel is no duplicates, no versions. It's all just single games. I then have all main ROMs. That's the entire main wheel, so that's two. We have main four player, we have fight kit, I have that mapped out to arcade six. We have shmups, another rendition of main. We have the gun games. The gun games, yes, as far as mapped out to arcade sticks, I have like the start and the coin mapped out. So technically, yes, it is mapped out. We're gonna count it. The light gun games, same theory, but you do need the aim tracks, the light guns for it. You have trackball games, that's six. We have racing games, that's main racing games like cruising world. The Atomus Wave, the M2, the Model 3, the Naomi, the Ring Edge, Tato Type X, Capcom is again another rendition of main, Capcom 1, 2, 3, Mugen, Open Bore, and Homebrew Main. That's it. These are the systems that I have mapped out to the arcade sticks. With the exception of Mugen and Open Bore, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I'm having a difficult time getting controllers mapped out for this because you have to do it for each individual game, I'm trying to figure it out. That's me personally, so I don't map those, nor do I play these, so I don't really care for it. And I did mention in my last video, if you're looking at moving an open bore, I'm not including the button configurations because you have to do that by game. It's too much of a headache. The last, last, last thing is the PC arcade slash multiplayer games. What, what a beauty, and I did post the video of it, it's such an amazing feeling getting the new TMNT Shredder's Revenge working on four arcade sticks plus two Xbox controllers. What an amazing feeling. So my PC arcade game wheel, I think it's at 150 games right now. I basically have, again, it's PC games mapped out to the arcade sticks. A good 80 to 90% of them work with the arcade sticks. The rest of them are multiplayer that require an Xbox controller such as Overcooked, Moving Out, or um, 
uh, it takes two. Like you need an Xbox controller. I have that in this wheel because it is multiplayer. But the biggest thing, obviously, is all the fighting games work with the arcade stick. So you're talking about Dragon Ball Z, the Injustice series, Mortal Kombat 11, Samurai Showdown, Street Fighter V, obviously. Again, the main fighters are on this. The Killer Instinct, Tekken 7, King of Fighters. Again, these are PC games working with the arcade sticks. Then as far as like the other games, uh, for example, there's a new like remastered recharge series. Some company made like asteroids and centipede. They bought like a whole new twist to it. I do have those working with the arcade sticks. You got like battle toads, obviously bro force, amazing, beautiful game, especially on the arcade sticks. Again, these games are PC games that were not really designed to play on arcade sticks, but they are arcade feely. They, they play like arcade games, and I do have them working on the arcade sticks. Granted, again, a handful will not work on the arcade sticks. You do need a controller and such, but beautiful stuff. Again, it takes two. As you can see, my PC games wheel, any PC wheel, it's just the logo to kind of relieve terabyte and hard drive space. I just have logo. I don't have any themes or videos for the PC side. So now, speaking of competitors, and I always laugh at this, right? I've yet to see a competitor show off current gen PC games, uh, such as like Street Fighter V or Tekken 7 working on the arcade stick. I've seen like the cliche usual, like Ultra Street Fighter 4, which everybody has, but I'm just gonna do it now because I mentioned it. We're gonna launch Street Fighter V. I'm gonna long press my enter button and basically with no cuts, we'll show you and I'll show you how Street Fighter V launches. And it's just crazy. It's also important how your specs, your PC is. There's, better, there's no better feeling than playing Street Fighter V on arcade sticks in 4K. Again, my PC is running an i7 16 gigs of RAM with a 2070 Super. So again, my PC is about two years old, but the specs on it, I'm basically set for life on it. Going through like, you know, the, do you want to connect to the internet? Obviously, no. We're gonna go right on in and just admire some two player Street Fighter V arcade action. As you can see, I just did players one and two. We'll obviously run with the Ryu, honestly. We'll randomize the stage just to show it off. Uh, I don't want to do Kanye's cliche. Let's do E-Honda. It's just an awesome feeling just seeing Street Fighter V in 4K. And again, I do have other um, emulators such as Tato Type X and Sega Ring Edge. So I did run like Vir uh, Virtua Tennis uh, 4. That's actually four players on Virtua Tennis. Tato Type X does have like Street Fighter V type arcade. I also have like the Tar Heel Arcade, Haunted Museum 1 and 2 for the light guns and stuff. And as you can see, look. Oh man, beautiful, look at that. And it's in 4K. And I'm playing with the arcade sticks. There's just no better feeling. And again, Street Fighter V does utilize all eight buttons. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm utilizing all eight buttons on this game. What a thing of beauty. Hit him with a Hadouken. Hit him with a spin. Oh, love it. I could press pause. I could go back to the menu. Again, all utilizing the arcade sticks. And if I exit, it brings me right back into hyperspin. Takes like five seconds to regain focus, but as you can see, we are back in action. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, I was actually getting ready to play, let's see, Centipede. Centipede Recharge is awesome. We'll run that real quick. So basically it's a modern take on Centipede. Again, my PC wheel, as you can see, it's only logos to save hard drive space. It's only logos, there's no videos, there's no themes to it. So this right now is Centipede. I'm basically utilizing the mouse click 
and the track wall. So again, it is a modern take on the classic centipede. It, it actually added like a bunch of stuff. And as you can see, I am using the track wall. Awesome stuff. Look at this, the spiders here. Now we got like a triple shot burst. Beautiful. Again, I do have the volume on this off and low. So pretty cool stuff. If I long press the exit, it'll escape out and we are back into hyper spin. Oof, man, what a thing of beauty. Like I said before, it is a multi-functioning system. So if I wanted to play GameCube, I really will not play it in front of the screen. I would take it out and bring it to my battle station. I think honestly, I covered everything I really wanted to in this video. I'll be obviously making more videos. Stay tuned, I will be doing a lot more streaming, hopefully, again, being a father of a one-year-old, late nights, trying to get her to sleep, it's, it's, uh, it takes a toll. I've actually had to break streams and I would start a stream where gaming and then the baby cries and then I actually have to disconnect because I have to rock her back to sleep and it takes a while to rock her back. But in all honesty guys, there you guys have it. The Bivik four player 55 inch screen with the 40 terabyte ultimate console inside of an arcade cabinet dubbing it the ultimate arcade. Oh, MS-DOS, oh man. Imagine if you're playing MS-DOS on Arcade 6, you can't. <laughs> but thanks guys, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned, definitely more videos on this to come.